Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar titled Concrete Doesn't Stand Tall Against HDPE Solid Wall. This is a presentation on Upanor's Sclare Pipe Solid Wall product. Our present presenter today is Mr. Grant Thornley, Director of Sales at Upanor Infra North America. So we're just going to go over a couple of housekeeping rules before we start. All PDA certificates will be issue issued out later this week to those who stay the duration of the webinar. Um, if you look beside the presentation, we do have our solid wall sclere pipe brochures in both English and French for your reference. After the webinar, all registrants and attendees will receive a recorded version of this webinar. If you are experiencing any loss of sound during the webinar, just simply refresh your page and you should be good to go. And of course, this is a live presentation, so if you do have any questions, feel free to send them in and we will send you a reply to your question accordingly after the webinar has uh, ended. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at the agenda for today's webinar. So presentation topics, uh, Grant is going to go over uh, who we are, uh, Open or Infra, the North American Division. We're going to go over HDP overview, features and benefits. Uh, we're going to look at the current HDP market, um, HDP life cycle cost, design considerations, pipe joining methods, installations and applications, and then we'll show you some new products for 2018. And with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Grant Thornley. Uh, thank you, Faze. I appreciate that, and uh, welcome everyone on a on a Tuesday afternoon. I appreciate uh, everyone joining us. Um, and uh, as Faze said, this is a live presentation, so if you do have any questions, uh, please uh, submit them, and uh, I'll see them on my screen. And that way, uh, if there's any particular slides I'm on, uh, there's a question I can answer them right away. So, to start, who is Upanor? Well, uh, Upanor uh, started uh, in 1918 as a, actually a furniture manufacturer and um, uh, from that you I mean how do you get to pipe well during the furniture manufacturing they actually met beds they made metal bed springs and uh, from the metal bed springs they needed a metal forge um, so that kind of leads us into the manufacturing of cast iron piping back in the 19 uh, uh, mid 1940s uh, later on uh, as we're in the piping uh, infrastructure uh, that led to the development of PVC or uh, manufacturing PVC piping Later on to polyethylene uh, crossed uh, cross link, which is PEX piping, uh, solid wall HDPE. Uh, later through uh, more R&D development, actually uh, Upanor or KWH back then uh, developed a closed profile structural uh, beam um, HDPE. Uh, and that was able to be wound into very large diameter, some of the largest diameter uh, piping up to 11 feet in, in North America. And then uh, bringing us today is uh, Upanor North America now manufactures uh, pipe as well as uh, engineered fabricated uh, solutions. So Upanor on a global basis, uh, we are a leading global producer of uh, polymer-based solutions for infrastructure. Uh, we are the different markets we're in is geothermal, drinking water, wastewater, stormwater, uh, marine cooling, uh, anything really that uh, is uh, conveys uh, media or, or liquid media on a pressure or non-pressure basis. Uh, our sales are about a billion dollars. Uh, we operate over 30 countries, 14 manufacturing facilities, and uh, about 3,900 employees worldwide. So just to give you kind of a reference of, of who we are. In North America, uh, which is the most important, uh, in uh, 2013, uh, KWH, which is probably what you most of you know us by uh, since KWH has been operating in North America for over 50 years. Uh, there was a merger in 2013 with KWH and Upanor, and that merger uh, rebranded uh, that uh, the, the joint um, uh, partnership as Upanor Infra. Uh, Upanor uh, manufactures, as indicated, um, uh, HDP pipe. You may be aware of our brand names, which is Sclare Pipe, Whale Gas, uh, or Whale Light Pipe. Um, our Sclare Pipe is manufactured from 3 quarters to 63 inches, Whale Light 18 inches to uh, 11 feet or 132 inches. Our ISO certified uh, facilities, uh, certified to uh, third party NSF, SF, BMQ, ASTM. Um, as well as our design, um, our engineering design support, um, we'll uh, work towards ASHTO, ASTM, AWM um, uh, guidelines and standards, and we have multiple manufacturing facilities in North America. 
So uh, getting into it, the characteristics and property of HDPE, uh, just a, a quick uh, thing. This is uh, one of our facilities, and you see a person standing in front of, a, um, I believe that is a 63-inch solid wall pipe. Um, always impressed by the size of those pipes. So resin properties, uh, just touching on that, um, I'll just quickly is that resin was uh, PE was invented in 1933, a long time ago, but over the course of 85 years, it has become uh, probably the, the predominant piping material uh, worldwide because of its unique properties, and we'll be getting into that. Uh, the manufacturing, when we talk about PE resins, um, we talk about polymers, and essentially just simply what that is, is you take these um, uh, two carbon atoms, which are ethylene, uh, and you take thousands of those molecules or atoms and you link them all together in a, in a reactor. And when you link them all together, you, you get, or the monomers of the building blocks, you get this very long polymer chain. And, and that is the, the, the PE resin. Um, the three major parameters when we talk about the, the PE resins, uh, the properties which um, um, typically um, we look at very closely is density, uh, which dictates the uh, tensile or uh, tensile yield strength or st and stiffness, um, molecular weight, which is um, uh, in in inductive uh, inducive of the um, uh, the durability, which or in other terms, long term uh, strength, toughness, ductility, uh, fatigue, endurance, and the molecular weight distribution, which is um, really provides. Um, references to the environmental stress crack resistance, which is um, if you were to um, cut or, or nick the pipe, would it actually cause um, um, stress cracking? So those are the three main parameters we, we take a look at, and we'll, we'll touch on those a little bit more. Um, like any technology, I mean, this was invented back in 1933, we're now back in 2018, um, there's been an evolution uh, of the, the resins um, from, from piping material that was good but today, you know, uh, I'm going to say phenomenal uh, characteristics and properties, um, which um, which wouldn't be recognized back in the 1933. Um, some of the resins that you're probably more accustomed to are, th are 3608, which are the medium densities, as well as uh, PE4710, uh, which is a high density bimodal resin, uh, meaning two types of molecular uh, weight or polymers are used in, in the uh, uh, manufacturing. The other one, which is uh, new to the market space, I'm going to say the past five years, uh, Dow has developed, is a polyethylene um, raised temperature, where uh, um, commonly uh, PE resin 4710 could operate to 140 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Now PERT allows you now to do an operational up to 180. So significant progress is made in the development of, of, of resin and will still continue. But, um, it's just incredible materials, and like anything, the evolution of um, uh, R&D continues to bring forward uh, piping materials, uh, polyethylene uh, piping materials that um, were not recognizable 10 years ago. Um, when we talk about resins, we, we are defining them for the cell classification, and this reference uh, through ASTM D3350, um, which dictates uh, how to uh, name and define uh, the resin. So off to the right here, you see PE4710. Uh, the first number, um, I mean, uh, PE represent it is a polyethylene. It could be polypropylene or different types of uh, polymer, but in this case, it's polyethylene. Uh, the four, uh, desig uh, four designation is uh, indicates that it's a high density resin. Um, the seven, uh, the uh, uh, crack growth uh, resistance. And 10 is the um, um, uh, hydrostatic uh, design uh, strength for, for that uh, material. So just as reference, what, um, when we talk about different materials, 4710, uh, it's just not a common name. It's actually a name uh, classification or cell classification. So some of the properties when, when we take a look at, which, for, which are unique to HDPE or, or polyethylene, is uh, creep and stress relaxation, which really gives it uh, the, the true value or, or benefits we see in the market space. Um, just quickly, what creep is, is that when there's a temporary stress, that if we were to have an external force uh, applied to that piping, we're trying to stretch that pipe out, over time, what you're seeing on, on the, on the left-hand side here is that if we apply 2,000 pounds over, over a certain period of time, the actual pipe will, con will, will creep or will actually stretch. And we'll actually begin to try to adapt and address the external forces being applied to it. 
And why we see temporary is that if we were to relieve that, that external stress, um, what happens is the pipe will actually return back to, to its original form. Um, so think of it, it's a very uh, elastic material. So when you apply stress, it will react to try to reduce uh, the, the stress uh, on it. And when you release that or remove it, it goes back to its original form. Um, in that vein, on the stress relaxation uh, side, is when, when a force is applied, let's say there's a, I don't know, someone uses native fill or uh, there's a rock sticking into, into the pipe um, or there's some type of, of stress that is uh, applied to it, that as the pipe, as it, as it um, deforms or strains, um, it compensates and actually begins to reduce because it's now moving in that direction of, of the external force the, the stress that's being applied is being reduced. So you can see here that o over time, that from 12,000 pounds, there's now a stress on the pipe of 3,000 pounds. So that really uh, allows that prevents the pipe from fatiguing and from, from overstressing. So ductility and toughness, which is another unique property of, of PE, um, it tolerates uh, freezing whether cracking and splitting, and part of that is because of the um, glass transition uh, temperature of it. Um, HDPE has a ductile temperature down to minus 170 degrees, uh, which means that if you're willing to install pipe uh, within, the, uh, within the winter, you can do that. Um, it does have a high impact strength, uh, highly resistant to uh, pressure surges, and we will touch on that a little bit more. And um, it has an elongation when we talked about stress and, and, uh, and creep, 500% uh, be before break at 73.4. So very uh, unique material that's very, very tough. Uh, and that's excellent uh, uh, material when you're, when you're doing um, uh, directional drilling. So the high tensile strength, uh, when we apply, when we put uh, stresses on it, and this is a picture of a, a dog bone uh, tensile stress that uh, we perform in, in, our, in our labs under QCs, uh, QA and QC. And what you see here is actually um, a two welded um, um, a section of pipe with two welds and then our profile section. And if we continue to, to pull, what happens is we get the elongation or, or the tensile uh, of the material. And in this particular, it's 2,900 PSI. Uh, typically, you have, uh, from the slide before, you know, an elongation of around 500%, um, uh, percent, um, which is uh, very phenomenal. So whenever there's a very large um, uh, stress being applied to the material, it has the ability to deform without breaking, uh, which is a critical component when, when you get into areas, and we'll talk on these in seismic or, or, or surge pressures. Uh, HCP also has very high compressive strength uh, as, as pipe. That's, uh, that, that is a, a good component to have. Uh, it also has high abrasion resistance. It has, actually, HCP is the lowest when you take a look at a, a comparison of concrete pipe or clay pipe or PVC. Because of the ductility uh, or the ability to, um, to absorb the energy as uh, high velocity particles, uh, are slamming into the surface, the HTP material has the ability to absorb that energy. Um, so think of a billiard ball of being thrown against a concrete wall. It, it's going to bounce back, and that energy is going to be absorbed by the wall. But if I was to throw that against a, a, a plastic or a polymer wall, it actually the wall bends a bit to absorb that energy and then kicks, kicks the particle back. And that's the, the high abrasion resistance is one of the reasons you find HCP uh, highly used in uh, mining applications for slurry or, or high abrasive materials. The other aspect is the Manning's number or the, um, the coefficient of friction, which is uh, how slippery that, um, if I can be um, crude, how slippery the surface is. Um, for corrugated metal pipe, um, it has 0 0.02 uh, concrete. Um, is about 0 0.013, and then for sclerapite, which is HDPE, is 0 0.009. Uh, we'll get into the Mannings. I mean, that's a critical component when you're signing, uh, designing and sizing piping, is that if I have a rough material, uh, pipe material, such as concrete, I'm going to have to actually make that pipe um, a larger diameter versus something that's smaller, just because of the resistance of the flow through the, through the, um, through the piping.
Oops. The other aspect is HEP, why it's such a great uh, material to be used in water and particularly for wastewater is that because it's unaffected by acid and bases, it's a nonpolar material, it's very inert to, uh, to chemistries, um, it, it can, it can um, tolerate very high and low pHs, um, so it's great in wastewaters um, and also for um, um, a municipal wastewater applications. Uh, we, some of the uh, materials that we build as above ground wastewater treatment tanks uh, that get hit with, with very low, very high, and, and chlorine. So it's a great material uh, for uh, the transport of, of sewer as well as um, potable water applications. Uh, for high organic uh, loaded um, uh, media or, or liquids, um, such as sewage or, or sanitary water, is hydrogen sulfide is always an issue uh, with uh, creating a high, I'm sorry, very low pHs against the surface of concrete, it can dissolve it, whereas HEPE is hydrogen sulfide resistant. Um, so you're not going to get any degradation uh, from hydrogen sulfide. And, and lastly, because uh, quite simply, because HEPE is a non-metallic, it cannot uh, rust, corrode, or create turbicles. Um, so this is a, a great um, a great feature of that, particularly when, when you're looking at the original design, when you initially design um, a, a piping system, and then 50 years later, are you still going to have the same uh, surface or, or flow or Manning's number uh, associated with that surface? So, I mean, all these uh, from, from uh, being a chemically inert to hydrogen sulfide resistant to uh, non-corrosive is critical. In, in looking at what are the long-term operations and maintenance needs of, of a particular piping system. Uh, other aspects is that a lot of the piping that we do install is, is above ground, um, I'm sorry, is, is below ground, but sometimes you get some um, uh, river crossings or it could be a bridge and, and so on, whereas the, the actual pipe is going to be exposed uh, to UV, uh, um, uh, to the sunlight or UV radiation. Um, the um, the HEP pipe is typically um, manufactured using uh, carbon black. It's about two percent. It's just that even that small percentage of carbon black blended is a homone harmoniously blended into the HEP material creates a very unique mat uh, material, but um, meaning that it provides exceptional UV resistance. So with a two percent carbon black. Uh, HEB pipe can be installed outside with, with no degradation uh, to, to the integrity of the pipe over 50, 100 years. So, um, and taking a look at one of the common materials, I thought uh, this is the um, uh, premise for our discussion today, is, is a comparison between concrete and HDPE. Uh, concrete has been around for a very, very long time. I, I will say that, hey, concrete does have um, um, good applications. There's no such thing as a panacea or a material that solves all, all the uh, problems within our infrastructure. Um, but in some instances, there's better materials to, to be applied, and that's really what we're talking about today, is that when would you apply H, uh, an HDPE versus a conventional material? So just quickly, I won't belabor it, but you know the, the characteristics of concrete, it is a, a composite material, uh, meaning it is made up of um, several um, um, uh, substances, such as aggregate, Portland cement, uh, mixtures, fillers, um, as well as uh, rebar. In some instances, you won't see this very much anymore, but fly ash was, was, was uh, sometimes used. Uh, there's issues associated with fly, uh, fly ash, but I'm not going to uh, get into, into that. Um, but by nature, concrete is porous, and that's really the, the, the crux. I mean, it's, it's a great material, but the porosity of the material doesn't lend well to certain applications. Um, and because the concrete is strong in compression, but very, very weak uh, in, in tensile, that is why we're adding uh, steel to it. And the addition of steel provides you know, increased tensile strength uh, to, the, to the concrete. But again, because of the porosity of it, that's where the concern um, uh, lies, is that whenever the steel is exposed to, to water and, and, and a, um, an oxidative environment, it can corrode. Uh, concrete is a brittle material with low, ducti low ductility, um, so therefore it cracks easily. And uh, I think you can see that whenever you um, uh, drive by a bridge and so on, you can kind of see the cracks and, uh, or even chunks of material that have sprawled off. 
Um, so whenever the cracks expose, uh, the, the cracks occur, it exposes the steel, provides an additional venue or path, path, uh, pathway for the water to infiltrate to, to that steel. And uh, lastly, concrete is a, a low strength to weight ratio, uh, resulting in, in um, um, heavy, heavy structures or uh, very heavy pipes. So, in, when we take a look at uh, concrete or HDPE, steel corrosion, again, uh, HDPE is non-metallic, uh, so it cannot corrode, um, but this is the challenge with, with HD, I'm sorry, with, with concrete. Uh, due to concrete's, again, low tensile strength, great in compression, not good in, intensa, in tension, steel bar is inserted or, wild, uh, or wire cages are inserted into, uh, into the concrete. Um, with the porosity of the concrete, if any water is present and comes in contact with steel, that initiates uh, uh, corrosive. Um, if the soils, particularly I'm going to say in the northern provinces or the uh, northern provinces or states, I should say, uh, where we use road salt, well, that even um, accelerates the corrosion if a, a water, salt, or saline solution is to penetrate uh, to, uh, through the concrete to the steel. You can have a four or, or, or sometimes tenfold acceleration of the, um, of the steel, so a rapid uh, deterioration uh, uh, or oxidation of the steel. Just on the on the left hand side, you can see kind of this is a PCCP pipe, which kind of shows there is a uh, a steel shell, and then that's wrapped uh, corresponding with pre-stressed wires. And on the right hand side, you kind of see the broken wires. Uh, once those wires are broken, and this is why it's a, a composite. The uh, the, the wire holds the concrete in compression. Once the wires break, it's no longer in compression, and that's when you, you can have these ruptures or catastrophic uh, uh, failures of the, um, the concrete pipe. Uh, spalling, uh, which is um, a function really of, of corrosion again, but what happens is that when, uh, when water penetrates uh, into and onto the uh, steel and corrosion begins, the corrosion products um, expand, it's, they uh, form and they expand and they create internal pressures in, in the concrete and those internal pressures um, basically lend themselves to uh, micro cracking and the more pressure, internal pressure that builds, more corrosion that occurs, uh, the cracking occurs more and then that can lead to uh, spalling, so concrete actually popping and falling out. And here what you see on the right hand side is just um, some examples of spalling where you actually see the uh, a steel reinforcement um, uh, underneath, uh, which should not be exposed. Uh, alkali silica reaction, ASR, um, uh, again, this is uh, not um, extremely common because we're, uh, more and more people are using less uh, reactive silica, but um, I can tell you in the, uh, the nuclear industry, this is um, an incredible uh, concern uh, because of the concrete. And what occurs, the, um, the alkali silica, or ASR, uh, causes the concrete to deteriorate by, um, much like corrosion, it creates the silica reacts and it causes a, a gel to form. And the gel, uh, it expands internally and causes internal stresses. And those internal stresses then propagate uh, outwards and uh, causes... Um, uh, mitigates uh, cracking within the surface, and you can kind of see uh, ASR is indicative of these little uh, micro cracks. Um, looks similar to, uh, it can look similar to to corrosion underneath, uh, but if you see a lot of these micro cracks, uh, it's um, typically, or I should say, it, it can be um, a, a induct, indicative of, uh, of ASR uh, reactions. Uh, and for ASR to, to occur is that moisture has to react with uh, uh, active silica. Hydrogen sulfide corrosion, uh, bacteria is, is essentially is the hydrogen sulfide forms when bacteria, uh, specific bacteria, uh, reacts. It, um, it's an anaerobic environment. Uh, so um, um, for uh, uh, wastewater applications where uh, maybe the uh, wastewater is sitting there, uh, bacteria, um, uh, in an anaerobic environment, lack of oxygen uh, consumes the um, organics, and as a byproduct, produces sulfuric acid. And that sulfuric acid typically attacks the the crown of because it's a uh, gaseous. It attacks the crown of of, of the pipe, and 
uh, as we're aware or everyone knows is that if you subject um, concrete pipe to an acidic environment, it's going to actually dissolve that pipe. And that's very common in wastewater applications when you go in is that the wall thickness of the crown is, is much, much thinner uh, than uh, the spring line or the bottom of the pipe. And here's just an example uh, on the uh, right-hand side of a, um, a wastewater application where you can see the, the concrete is just dissolved away. So ductility, uh, this is getting into a, a little bit more of the design aspect of it is, you know, HDPE is a flexible uh, pipe, whereas concrete is really viewed as a rigid pipe um, uh, design. In this particular, just to give an example, pictorial, on the left-hand side, what you see is an initial uh, condition of um, two pipes, uh, HDP on, on the left and, and concrete on the right, which are buried under, under a road. And you can see that with the lines coming down is, is HDP pipe, because it is flexible, uh, the, design, uh, the design specification is indicative of a pipe-soil interaction. So the pipe has a certain um, strength and integrity, but also the design also relies on the bedding material uh, of the pipe as well. Um, so because it's being buried and it's not going to change, that's a very it's a well accepted design and and um, allows the economics uh, of using the, the surrounding soil to help with the strength of the pipe. Whereas concrete being stiff, it's essentially taking the full load of, of not using the soil. There's a slight soil interaction, but very, very slight, but takes the full load of any stresses being applied to it. So what you see on the, on the right-hand side is, well, what happens when the, let's say, the conditions um, of, of the burial change? So, and we know that, I mean, this year uh, you had Hurricane Harvey and, and, and other uh, natural, um, uh, I'm going to say, uh, um, disasters occur, but with Hurricane Harvey, I mean, who would have guessed that uh, Texas in some areas would have been under four feet of water? So the, the um, I, I don't think the, the designers ever um, uh, considered that. But when you take a look at, you know, the soil condition is that, well, because you didn't anticipate that, and I don't think anyone would have, but because you didn't anticipate that, the soil conditions have changed. So what you see here is the soil conditions becomes, it's uh, a little bit more wet or saturated. And what occurs is that the pipe, as you apply pressure to it, because it's a soil uh, pipe interaction, the soil, uh, the, I'm sorry, the pipe deflects. You can kind of see it elongates a little bit. Um, now on the, on the right-hand side, uh, you see the solid pipe taking the, um, um, rigid pipe taking the solid load. And what happens is that because there is no soil interaction support, it, it actually fails. Um, so ductility and deflection is actually a, a good safety aspect to it. So HEB piping market and life cycle costs. Well, factors that affecting the market growth. Why HEP? As we said, it was developed in 1933, and, and today, you know, it is a, 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 a global installed uh, piping material. Um, uh, which is used in uh, potable, as, uh, I'm sorry, in industrial as well as municipal and other applications as, as well as commercial. Well, the reason for it is that it's leak-free, corrosion resistant, hydrogen sulfite uh, resistant pH. It is just a very, very robust um, and, and very uh, unique material, as well as seismic uh, resistant, we'll, we'll touch on that. So a lot of factors have lent itself to why a P HDPE uh, piping uh, has has grown significantly over the years and becomes uh, has um, uh, is being viewed as a substitution uh, material over conventional materials such as ductile iron um, and uh, uh, concrete piping. So just quickly um, from a, um, uh, a conference I was at uh, about two years ago, uh, they did uh, one of the presenters did national survey on pipe performance for drinking water and force mains, and I thought it was interesting that where we are now is, you can see, and this was a, a poll for numerous municipalities uh, across North America, and this is, uh, can be downloaded, the source was a, the ASE uh, Pipelines 2016 uh, conference. Um, and what you're seeing is that there's a decrease in, in concrete pipe, and there's a significant increase in the acceptance and the adoption and installation 
of, of polymer pipe. In this, this case, I've highlighted um, HCP, which is 29%, uh, but also PVC, which is also a polymer pipe, is 35.48%. Uh, so definitely there is a move away from uh, concrete pipe and there is a uh, more of an embracing of uh, the polymer piping, such as HDPE. One of the reasons for that is that when you start, you know, one of the things that we've, we've been tracking in a lot of uh, Virginia Tech and a lot of other uh, associations, such as asset management, people are now tracking what are the common failures or failure rates of the piping material. And what they're finding, an, another study on water main uh, breaks uh, from uh, Utah State University is corrosion, uh, crack, uh, uh, cracking, uh, leaks, and fatigues are the number one reasons of um, uh, piping failures. Whereas HDPE, you know, significantly uh, addresses those uh, those issues directly. And we'll touch on that. Another uh, water leakage. Uh, one of the reasons, you know, why people are now becoming more concerned is that there is an associated cost for water. As people know, there's pumping costs and so on. And in order to build and, and, and rehabilitate your infrastructure, uh, you need to be generating more revenues. Um, so it becomes critical is that you don't want to waste any water. Any leaking water, uh, there's an associated loss of revenue. So uh, more people are turning towards a, a HDPE which is um, a fused, think of it as a single pipe, there's no joints and so on, we'll touch on that. But HDPE represents the, um, um, the best system for, the, um, for zero leakage or lowest leakage possible. So that is w another reason why municipalities are turning towards that because they want to capitalize and maximize their, their revenue uh, for um, um, uh, drinking water as well as wastewater. And pipe corrosion, just quickly to touch on that, is um, it represents, this is the U.S., oh, I'm sorry, under NACE, represented about uh, $35 billion in, um, in um, infrastructure that needs to be repaired because of corrosion. So corrosion is such a significant factor um, in, the, in the life, in the design, or the life expectancy, um, and even the failures of, of um, existing piping. And seismic resistance, another aspect to it. I mean, I think more people are starting to to, um, uh, to take a look at seismic. And what I mean by that is that it's interesting with the onset of, um, of fracking, um, which is like North Dakota, South Dakota, and so on, people are actually finding, uh, be, because of those, um, I'm, through EPA, there's some reports on that, uh, but they're finding that there's more seismic activity in North America due to these, um, um, due to these exercises or, or, or fracking. So seismic is becoming a, a critical component in, in the design for more and more states and provinces across North America. Um, as you can kind of see here, if you take a look at a great, a great paper research is the um, uh, WRF, uh, WRF uh, 20, which is the, um, took a look at recent uh, earthquake implications for, for the U.S. water utilities. Um, and they found that wherever there was seismic area, really there was, there was no um, issues with respect to HDPE pipe, but there was leaking and failures with other materials, um, such as ductile iron or, or PVCs, such, uh, which used um, a bell and spigot as aspects, whereas the bell and spigot could come apart. HDPE is a single fused monolithic structure, it's a single pipe. Um, so if there's any seismic movement, there's really, there, there's no bell and spigot to come apart and there's no joints to, to, to separate. So life cycle costs. Let's jump into that. So we touched on all the, the, the features and benefits and the value propositions of, of ACPE. And what that leads into is really taking a look at life cycle costs. And this is when people talk about asset management, more and more municipalities are looking at the, the actual life cycle costs uh, or the, um, the cost of full ownership when people install these piping systems. Um, so with, uh, with the life cycle costs, as some of you may know, is that you're, you're taking a look at um, the acquiring cost or the, um, um, the direct cost to purchase this, the maintenance, the operations, and disposing of the system. Um, when we take a look at that, and this is, I pulled this uh, graph from uh, um, the Alliance for PE Pipe, um, you can see that PE Pipe has the lowest 
life cycle cost uh, out of all the materials from ductile, from PVC uh, to concrete over, over the course of 100 years. And that's critical when, when we take a look at life cycle costs. You know, when, when we purchase something and install it, there's a cost, but we also don't want to burden future, future generations uh, with um, inferior products, whereas they're going to have to um, um, pay for those, those fixes of our mistakes. In particular, with, with materials nowadays, with a 100-year design life, uh, you know, I'm always amazed at why wouldn't everyone be installing systems uh, that have the longest life cycle or longest design life possible associated to them. So just a quick calculations, and again, there's so many different ways of doing life cycle costs, but really what you're, what you're looking at is what is the initial or the direct cost of, of the purchase, and I, I have not in, included this, what the project management costs or the engineering or the installation costs are. Um, I'm just using this as a rough estimate or a, a, a guideline for, for people to understand life cycle costs if they're, if they're not familiar with it. So there's initial cost of it, there's operation, um, which uh, in these particular instances, it could be uh, pumping costs. So operations is that when we talked about the, uh, the Manning's number, and this is key, is that, that for HDPE, when we say, well, this is the Manning's number at design, 50 years later, it's just still it's the same Manning's number. Whereas concrete, the Manning's number may be one number at the design or the, the, the installation of the, of the piping system, but you know, let's say 10 years, 20 years later, because of the, 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 um, the pHs could be erosion, could be corrosion, it changes the surface of the many numbers, as you're aware, so therefore, if uh, the pumping cost is going to increase because there's more resistance to that flow. So I won't belabor on that, but when we take a look at operations for HDPE, you know, your um, um, uh, pumping costs are going to be set, whereas uh, other materials that uh, you're going to be changing the manage number is actually going to increase. And again, I'll, I'll leave that for everyone to um, uh, to to to, um, to rationalize themselves. The maintenance costs, and then key is the design life over the years. Um, HCPE, if you go for PPI or, or PE, uh, PE Alliance, you can go through and take a look at the, the white papers and uh, the presentations and the research done on this. It has a 100-year design life, whereas concrete I put down as, as 50 years. And again, as reference, uh, my own opinion is that um, I, I believe that concrete is less from, from my experience over 20 years, uh, but I'm going to put it as a design life of 50. If I was to calculate all this, is is essentially work through that the HCPE is about $110,000. If you take a look at the concrete, it's like $200,000 or 82% more. Well, why is that? It's because of the design life. Because essentially what you're looking at is you're, you're going to have to buy two of those concrete systems the time, uh, at, the, at, the, at the time that you'd have to replace an HDPE system. And therein lies really what, what's the heart and soul of a life cycle cost calculation. What's the design life, and what's what is the true ownership of that system? So, don't um, uh, more and more people aren't just looking at the capital because it can be deceiving. Uh, capital doesn't tell you what the long-term costs are going to be, and there's more and more municipalities now, you know, drilling into what are the the features and benefits of the materials, and really what is the what is the design life and the long um, the life cycle cost. Um, of, of purchasing that, that system. And I think that is a great uh, direction where we're now seeing is that the engineers today are becoming more in tune with the different options and the different materials available to them, um, which is um, critical because there's less money to, to buy these systems. So we really need to optimize the economics of what we're trying to do uh, as we rehabilitate, uh, rehabilitate the infrastructure, uh, piping infrastructure in North America. So design and uh, pipe joining methods. Um, as you're very uh, familiar with, it's ATP uh, systems follow design standards or North American set design standards. Some of those are uh, through ASTM, AWWA. Uh, some of the more common ones are uh, F714, uh, C9, uh, C906, and uh, C901. 
Um, I won't belabor those, but those are the, the typical guidelines which we manufacture uh, or design our, our piping systems to. So when we talked about the mannings, we, um, I mentioned this before, we get into this a little bit more, is the design characteristics or, or considerations when you're doing the hydraulics is uh, I'm designing a certain flow rate uh, or velocity through my pipe. Well, HCPE is uh, smoother than other conventional products. It's very, very, if you've ever touched uh, an HTV pipe, you know it's almost like Teflon. It's so slippery. So, and that helps with a non-stick surface. And that smooth, uh, smooth surface and non-stick also helps uh, when you take a look at um, a, the um, ever uh, take a look at a, um, a pipe that's been removed and been in operations. You can see that even if you if you don't even take and consider the corrosion, but there's a lot of scaling, um, uh, calcium carbonate um, adhering to to the sides of the pipe, uh, as well as microbiome. When you get, um, um, uh, you can also get a, mic a combination of microbiome and scaling growing together. And what that does, once it starts sticking to the sides, it significantly reduces the um, uh, resistance of the manning numbers, but also starts reducing the diameter of the pipe as well. So significant costs are are are, uh, are going to be um, uh, realized as uh, as more time goes by as the pipe diameter uh, restricts. With HDPE, the non-stick surface, you're not going to have um, calcium carbonate uh, sticking to it. You're not going to have the microbial growth uh, sticking to the surfaces. So, you know, when we do initial design um, for for day one to day you know to to year 50 is that that surface is going to have the same Manning's number. So therefore, what we designed the hydraulics for a system to is not going to change. And we don't have to build in buffers saying, OK, well, after 20 years, we're going to have to assume that we have a restriction. Uh, the pipe um, diameter is going to be reduced by 20%. With HDPE, it's 100% on the design. So it allows us, when we uh, maintain optimum flow rates, the result is uh, there are smaller pipe sizes we can use because we can put a higher flow rate through it. Um, because we're not going to get the pressure uh, losses or drops, we can have flatter grades for installed. Uh, we have reduced pumping costs, which is um, it's very significant over the course of 50 to 100 years. And there's uh, significant relining advantages. Just a quick reference to the Hayes and Williams. When we talk about the the, the uh, ends or the Hayes and Williams factors, just HCP is 150, 155 cement lined um, uh, piping, but 110, 140 in steel is 100 to 130. Just just for reference. The flow comparisons. HB can deliver the same flow uh, with an inside diameter. Uh, that is only 86% that of uh, ductile iron, given the same conditions. Um, as an example, um, uh, as a uh, factor of 150 or ductile iron, 100 and 130. So under the same conditions, we can have a smaller diameter pipe, which means a, a, a lower um, uh, cost association to the initial capital cost. So HCP uh, maintains, as I said, um, it maintains its uh, Hayes and Williams or C factors over the long term, whereas other material uh, w can possibly, through corrosion, uh, through scaling, through microbiome, uh, can lose, can reduce their um, uh, Hayes and Williams, um, increase their Hayes and Williams factors, and uh, which which is uh, then results in higher pumping costs. So pressure design considerations, uh, steady state uh, pressure and pressure due to dynamic or, or surge and fatigue or transients. And this is, again, the, the properties when we talk about stress and creep, uh, one of the major uh, values or benefits uh, of HDPE is its ability uh, to withstand those uh, the steady state pressures, but more so the transient pressures uh, that um, has caused a lot of um, uh, pipe uh, breakages throughout North America. So steady state or the operation pressure, um, I mean, pretty straightforward. Um, it is a function of what the um, uh, dimension ratio of the, the wall thickness is. Um, and it's the allowable stress in the pipe wall at the anticipated um, uh, service temperature. So pretty, pretty straightforward of, uh, with respect to wall thickness or dimension ratio of the operating state. The dynamic event or, or transient pressure is, is more key and, and something that should um, is, is taken into consideration in our designs. 
Um, it could be, I mean, water hammer, and that could occur if someone turns a valve off too quickly, uh, a pump um, turns on too fast, uh, anything that causes a pressure transient to propagate through that, um, uh, through the water uh, or wastewater, and then slams into, um, um, it could be a, a bend or a turn, causing, um, uh, inducing um, major stresses with, within the pipe. Um, so it could be a reoccurring event, um, a valve as a valve actuation, pump start, stop, or occasional event. When we take a look at surge or water hammer, um, this is a, a very interesting graph, and this is done with a, um, uh, a high uh, a high sampling rate trans um, 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 transducer pressure transducer, um, and that's you. <coughs> excuse me. You need to have a high speed in order to uh, resolve this. But you can see that uh, on the concrete, you have these very large uh, um, uh, peaks and valleys uh, of the pressure going up and down. So these peaks are very, very you know, high pressures acting against the, the, the wall of the pipe. With PVC, which is a little bit more, it's a more flexible material, it allows to absorb that energy um, to, to kind of contract and expand uh, with those pressure transients. And when you take a look at PE, again, because of the creep and stress um, uh, properties, it's able to really absorb, maximum absorb, the, the energy caused by, by water hammer. So it, it, uh, it accommodates uh, and, um, and, uh, and suppresses the, the, the water hammer by being able to, to, to bend and move. So what occurs is that because of the ductile uh, pipe, there's fewer wave cycles, and there's a reduction in the wave amplitudes. And that, that's critical when, whenever you have uh, older systems, um, whereas you, you may experience um, uh, transients, uh, meaning that you may have to shut a valve off. I mean, that's, I, I would say, probably the biggest one, or the, the start-stop of, 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 of um, uh, pump stations or pumps. So cycle failures, um, you know, off, on, off, on, off. Uh, HTP withstands, you know, 200 million cycles uh, at 1,000 psi. Where PVC, just, um, I mean, a good uh, material, um, but uh, it only it withstands 2 million cycles at 600 psi. Uh, Unibel handbook directs designers to consider uh, fatigue capacity in the selective DRs for PVC pipe as as differences. So I'm not going to um, to belabor to get into every single design aspect of it, but just so you know, is that there is a uh, Upanor has developed an online uh, pipe design calculator which is accessible online. Um, I'd uh, put to you that if you are interested, take a look, go to the website and take a look at it, and it can design up for you uh, specific to our Scalera pipe um, all the design requirements uh, that you uh, uh, may require, as well as uh, taking all your, your inputs and variables. So HDPE joining methods. Um, one is, is the, the, the beauty of an HEPE pipe is that it is a thermal uh, plastic, meaning it can be uh, heated and um, uh, melted and refused or recasted and re, uh, um, uh, re-extruded. Um, so it can be reused and reused and reused. And because it is a thermal plastic, not a thermal set, because it can be remelted, the butt fusion, that is the, 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 um, the real, again, another value uh, benefit of HDPE is that we can fuse two um, uh, p pieces of pipe or butt ends of the pipe together to become a single monolithic single pipe. So two pieces of pipe when fused become a single pipe. And what that means, there are no joints uh, uh, or um, areas of weaknesses that can come, up, uh, come apart, uh, which basically indicative of a zero leak system. Uh, other aspects, if you're not doing butt fusion, which is the most economical, uh, is socket fusion, electrofusion, flanges, uh, and other aspects. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, quickly, a butt fusion is, you take a look at this at McElroy um, uh, fusion machine. Uh, the way this uh, operates is that um, two pieces of pipe come in. Uh, they are uh, lined. The, the ends uh, go through a profile cut to make sure they're squared. Uh, they move together towards a heating plate, it's heated up, it's a, typically a heated Teflon plate. The two ends are heated up uh, close to their glass transition. Uh, the plate is removed and then the two pipes are then pressed together at a certain pressure. Uh, and because it's uh, at the glass transition, 
the two pieces of pipe fuse together to become, a, again, a uh, monolithic uh, pipe. It is a single now pipe. There is no differentiation between the, the two materials. In essence, because the, um, the, at the joint or the fused uh, joint is thicker or um, has a, a higher density or higher um, HCP material, the joint is typically stronger than, than the pipe itself. Just another uh, picture of this. Electrofusion couplings, um, if you can't get, in some instances, if you're doing a, a joint repair, um, let's say there's um, uh, someone has put a backhoe into the pipe or something like that, you need to do a, a, a joining of the pipe, you can use an electrofusion uh, coupling, uh, which is essentially it is a, a coupling with a heater inside. Uh, uh, electric power is driven through the, the two um, uh, profiles here is uh, an electric amperage is, is, is passed through here. Uh, it heats up the pipe and the pipe inside of this is, fuses together. Uh, electrofusion uh, joints can come up to 63 inch in diameter. Flange uh, connections, typically when uh, flange adapters are stub ends with, with back rings, uh, common when you're joining other piping materials. So a concrete or ductile iron uh, needs to be um, uh, joined to uh, uh, HCPE, as long as we know what the, the bolt pattern is uh, or the engineer knows what the bolt pattern is, it's very easy to, to align and uh, connect the two materials together. Uh, mechanical joint adapters, uh, it can be either a, a, a compression fitting, uh, there is just a gasket of fitting, and now uh, what um, uh, the, this is a Victaulic. What we're, what we're seeing is uh, is uh, grooved piping. Um, typically, the most economic, of course, is to fuse uh, HDPE pipe um, to uh, to to ensure that it's zero leakage. But in some instances, let's say above ground, uh, let's say bypass lines, or it could be a temporary line. Um, uh, groove piping uh, with mechanical joints are also a, uh, a feature and a benefit that can be used. Um, find uh, in the mining uh, industry, we find um, a lot of groove piping or mechanical coupling because of the movement of that pipe. Uh, transitional fittings, saddle fittings, uh, fabricated fittings. Um, there's lots of, you know, essentially anything that uh, you require is uh, there, there's a fitting that's associated to help facilitate the, the install or the application requirements. Uh, getting in the installation and applications, uh, here is um, you know typical um, uh, installation. This is about a 4,000 foot 6 inch uh, DR17. Uh, it's a sewer force main and <laughs> excuse me, you can see that the pipe is uh, resting on top. This is going to be a, a slip lining whereas this pipe is going to be pulled into uh, inside of, of another pipe that's been uh, uh, pigged and, um, and, and, and prepared. Um, with the HTPE, I mean, it's easy to, long lengths can be pulled uh, without any uh, issues of fatiguing um, or, um, or compromising the structural integrity of the piping. Uh, another one, sanitary sewers force mains. Uh, this is going to be pulled in place. This is a 16 inch DR17. Uh, we talked about municip uh, municipal water and uh, wastewater, but also gas distribution uh, uses HDPE. Uh, very, very common. In fact, probably 95% of all gas distribution lines, which are about 12 inches and less, is HDPE. Um, typically, a medium density, not a high density, uh, some high density, but the majority of them are medium density uh, polyethylene. But 95% of your gas distribution systems or HDPE. Um, that is a significant change in the industry um, the, um, over uh, steel um, or other metallic uh, materials that are basically now being eliminated. Uh, other applications are, are slip lining. Uh, we took this as the, the app of in case some of you aren't familiar with slip lining. It's essentially taking an existing pipe and slipping a, another uh, pipe diameter, uh, another pipe which is a smaller diameter inside uh, of that pipe. Now when we talked about the Manning's number, why you can do this is that remember is that HEP has a very low Manning's number, it's very, very slippery, so therefore I can install a smaller diameter HCP pipe inside of a steel or concrete pipe and still have the flow or velocities that I'm looking for uh, without um, uh, compromising. Uh, the, the original uh, system design. 
uh, another um, um, angle of uh, uh, sewer slip lining. Um, here we see um, it's being pulled in pulled into place. Uh, not a very large uh, uh, trench uh, opening for this. Uh, here is a slip lining uh, showing that um, uh, I believe this is a 48-inch uh, slip line, and you can see this, that uh, the pipe is uh, being fused. And right after it's being fused, it's continued being being, being pulled in. Uh, HDD or, or or directional drilling, uh, another very um, uh, large application for HDPE uh, because of its ability uh, to to um, endure the uh, tensile strength being uh, pulled on it. Uh, this particular application is 125,000 feet of uh, gas distribution piping. You can kind of see that. Here is the actual um, uh, pulling mechanism that's pulling the pulling the pipe through. Uh, another force directional. Uh, here is pipe bursting, um, not as common as slip lining, but uh, pipe bursting is is still um, for rehabilitation within North America. Uh, essentially, it's uh, pulling in. We're going to be pulling in a same. Typically, when we're looking to pull in the same diameter pipe as the existing pipe. Well, to do that, we need to increase the diameter of the existing. So it actually expands or bursts the pipe, um, creating, let's say, if it's a 10-inch, bursts it to 11 or 12 inches to allow us to pull in a 10-inch line. Applications for HCPE, uh, industri industrial mining applications. It could be uh, uh, nuclear applications with respect to cooling. Um, it could be uh, pipeline diversions for uh, pipelines. Uh, river crossings, uh, landfill sites for uh, gas uh, because of the um, high corrosive nature or environment of um, uh, of methane gas. HDPE, I'm going to say, is probably about 80 percent, 85 percent used in the uh, uh, gas recovery for landfill sites uh, because of the high corrosive uh, nature. Uh, agriculture, water distribution, irrigation could be pressurized, or uh, in these particular instances, uh, lower pressures, um, very, very high volumes of water. Uh, marine applications, uh, great application because the density of HCP is less than water, so the actual pipe can be floated into place, and then once uh, in location, uh, the uh, ballast, uh, the the pipe can be filled, and the ballast will then pull it down to to the bottom of the uh, the, the lake or the ocean or or, or to to wherever it needs to be. Um, marine applications we're finding more and more uh, in the Great Lakes uh, area of uh, HDPE being installed um, in the depths of Lake Ontario because of zebra mussel and quagga mussel applications um, and very low cost and economics uh, due to that. Um, so that is the, the end of our presentation um, for the HDPE. I, I know we, there's a lot of information I put forward to you. Uh, the, uh, the webcast uh, will be uh, recorded and posted back up on our website. And um, I'll um, pass it back over to Faze. Okay, that brings us to the end of our webinar. I'd like to thank uh, Grant for the in-depth presentation. Again, as mentioned earlier, please feel free to download our solid wall brochure for more information. And I'd also like to mention that if you are viewing this webinar with a group, please send us everyone's email and name so we can also send them a separate PDA certificate as well as the pre-recorded webinar to watch at a later date. And again, we'd like to thank you for attending and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.